Hey, in this video, we are going to be talking about local development workflow. How many of you guys know if you code eight hours a day, the way you interact with your computer, the utilities you use, all the little things that make your development workflow enjoyable are important. This is eight hours of every day of your working life. So we're going to be talking about that, some of the utility apps that I use along the way. Um, a lot of you guys have asked me since I reviewed the Ergodox Easy Keyboard and have mentioned that that's my keyboard of choice these days. You've asked me for a lot more details about my keyboard layup and how I do the layers. I've got this beautiful brand new just released show it, Snow and Shine LED white version. I'll be showing you all the cool LED functions that this bad boy does. And also how I set up the keys, use my mouse at the same time through my keyboard and all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and switch the camera angle around so you can see my keyboard and going back and forth between my screen at the same time. This video is gonna be a lot of fun. Let's get into it. All right, I'm gonna get back to that beautiful keyboard here in just a second, but let's start off with uh, the first section of this video, which is going to be software utilities that just help your dev life. Uh, and there's pretty much three utilities that I'll install on any Mac right away that really help my workflow. Uh, the first one is Divi, which is a window manager app. The other two good ones out there that would be, I guess, competition with Divi would be Spectacle, which is free for Mac, uh, and also Magnet, which is a newer one, which is really cool as well. So if you basically want to open a window, you can have a hotkey that sends it to the left, to the right, full screen. You can tap full screen again, and it would go full screen to your other monitor, if you have two monitors, or you can send it to any corner if you want. So I could go left corner, right corner. And then I also have hotkeys for two thirds and hotkeys for one third display. So that's kind of the hotkeys that I have going on for Divi. And that simple window management utility is something that I tremendously miss if I'm on a machine that does not have it. The ability to just fire off hotkeys and move your windows around is tremendously useful. So that's the first thing I'm gonna install on any machine just to make life happier. Uh, the second thing I'm gonna install is gonna be iTerm2, which is a terminal replacement. Um, I'm definitely, definitely going to install a terminal replacement if for nothing other than a hotkey window. iTerm2 is great because you can have a hotkey window. No matter what application I'm in, I can hit, in my case, I've assigned it to command backtick, or on my Ergodox EZ, I have a dedicated key that I've just is a command back tick key. Um, so no, no matter what application you're in, you can automatically just pull up your all your different tabs, keep all your terminal tabs right there for all the things you're doing, and then hot key it away. That's something that once you get used to that again, you absolutely never, never, never want to go back. Uh, I'd say the third can't do without application would be Alfred. Alfred just makes searching easy no matter where you are. Let's say photos, whoops, see mistyped so now I can search Amazon or Wikipedia or Google um, but I can also go Photoshop photo booth uh, the POC phone the iPhoto you can basically it goes through your contacts your applications you get to search Google Amazon whatever right there again anywhere you are on your computer with a hotkey Alfred is super awesome so those are the three software utilities now let's get back to that keyboard again let me show you how I have the, the keyboard configured to actually help my dev workflow as well because this Ergodox EZ keyboard is completely configurable and really helps life out. So I'm gonna go split screen here. So here we are with this beautiful new Ergodox EZ keyboard. Again, the new Snow and Shine version with the beautiful fully programmable LEDs. I'm gonna get into all the programming and the way that I use this. Um, first of all, I'll show you the pretty stuff. You can change the hue to be any color you want. Obviously lots of beautiful colors to choose from with LEDs. Change your brightness, make it very subtle, make it full brightness. I always just leave it at full brightness. And there's a lot of fun macros that it comes built in with. So you can go through things that slowly fade in and fade out. Of course, let's make that a different hue there. And you can make them go a little faster. You can do things that pulse, that are, lots of them are very, very slow, very subtle, the kind of thing you'd actually want during your workday. Um, there's ones that slowly fade rainbows across, slowly do Knight Rider style effects, all sorts of fun stuff. Basically, all the things I was thinking I'd like to do come baked in. Uh, so lots of fun effects you can do there, and then you can also set up hotkeys just for some of your favorite colors. Let's go with a nice blue for now. Now I'll show you how I've got this keyboard programmed. So the Ergodox way 
is to use layers so your fingers don't move a whole lot. They'll be right here, got a little bit cluttered. You'll have it right around here and then you toggle to layers to do different types of things. So let's go ahead and pull up my computer screen now. Let's uh, pull up some actual code. So I'd say as far as familiarity goes, it took me about one month to get confident on this keyboard. And that wasn't using it constantly. I found the most efficient way to learn it was to go back and forth from a regular keyboard to this so I didn't get too frustrated. Um, after that, uh, about a month to get confident, two months to feel great, to really love the keyboard, three months to feel like a just rock star, and now I can type as fast as I want. I have no problems, except for apparently a typo. Board. Um, I, I have no problems typing full speed on this keyboard. And you actually get a lot of great things with it. So the layers concept is super cool. I know if you noticed earlier, but I was clicking my keys as I was using my mouse. When I click here, I go into layer one, which I can either go temporary or leave it constantly on. This is my programming layout, which I'll put the link to my layout in the description. Uh, these are temp layer one, toggle layer one, temp layer two, toggle layer two. So if I go to layer one, then my, they're not WASD, they're the ESDF, that controls my mouse. And then over here I can change it to control my mouse slow or medium or fast, which is default. So this fast key is really kind of useless. But if I want to, you know, slowly, I'm getting close to a file, go more medium. I don't really use slow too much, but I do use medium from time to time. So that's very useful. And then this is scroll. We don't really have much to scroll with. Let's go ahead and create some junk here. And I can scroll now. These are my scroll keys, like my scroll wheel would be. And I can also scroll left and right, although there is no left and right scroll. So I have mouse, scroll, all my mouse actions are right there. While it's not as powerful as a mouse, it definitely gets the job done and allows me to not move back and forth throughout the day. Um, also, this hot key right here is my arrow keys. So let's do some more stuff here. So if I go over here, then I have my arrow keys. So mouse keys, arrow keys, and I can move around all the way I need to move. And then this right here is my coder layer. So this is only a temporary, I really never need to toggle the coder layer. And that's what gives me basically all of my hot keys. On this hand, I have more, this is more dedicated to hot keys. There's an actual, another window. So let's go ahead and hide sublime text. Uh, pull up something here. Let's go new, right, left, full. These are my four quadrants. And that's one third or two thirds and that's one third. So that's kind of what I use that for. And then as far as my coder layer, I tend to do that over here. So let's say I'm doing a function. I can hold this and now I have parens. I have curly brackets and I have braces. I also have my common coder things at equals the arrow. Then I also have back ticks right there. So between that, I can do a lot of cool things. Function, just crank out a function really fast. Or if you're doing ES6, A equals, there we go. So what I did there is const A equals, which is on the blue layer, space, now I'm on this layer, arrow, just did an arrow function right there, and there. So those keys, once you get to know them, a lot of cool stuff. Really easy to crank out code, fast and fun. Also a lot of sublime text things, uh, I have a dedicated copy, cut, copy, paste here. So let's copy, paste, 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 paste. Use my arrow keys here, scroll up. Uh, I have some sublime text hotkeys programmed in here. So this will bump my selection down. These two keys, bump it up and down. And these will actually move my lines up and down. So that's a lot of fun. Let's move it back up there. Maybe bump my selection up one. There we are. That's really nice and easy to move stuff around. So you can do a lot of fun things really fast with that. And that's pretty much how I have this keyboard programmed. It took me a while to figure things out. If you ever have a kind of custom programmable keyboard, what I'd encourage you to do is take some time and think about the hotkeys that are frustrating to you. One thing that was frustrating to me was command tab, because on a regular keyboard, you're doing something like that. Yet I command tab all the time. So I kept tab right here, and I also made a shift tab right here. 
so I can easily go back and forth since I'm doing that all day long. Um, and I found that I didn't really need that extra space bar. So then here's my space, here's my backspace, and here's my tab right there. This is equals plus minus, kind of my math keys. There's my equals plus minus and or times, the common math keys that I use all the time. Um, and between those, I have a lot of fun, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun using this keyboard. And let me show you Visual Studio Code here. Like I said, I've been mentioning, I've been playing with code a decent bit recently, and I think I might be making a switch to Vis Visual Studio Code. One thing I love about Visual Studio Code is it lints real time in a really great way. Let's make an error here. You can see right there, my linter is showing, uh-oh, you're doing something wrong here, doing some problems. I also have a terminal right here if I wanna use my terminal in this project at all. Super nice. What's cool about Visual Studio Code is it gives you just enough to feel like an IDE, but it's really a text editor at heart. So it's a text editor that gives you a lot of good IDE things. So over here is my GitHub or my Git stuff, which is really nice. Uh, you can easily see all your Git changes. Let's go ahead and commit something. There we go. Now let's go change something over here. make some things there, let's hit save. And I should see my git changes here, super nice. And then I can click on it and you'll actually see your inline diffs, which is really nice. You'll see the red code you took away over here, the green code you took away over there. I can plus that. Okay, now it's staged. You can see that it's staged for commit. So that's, it's really nice. The GitHub integration feels completely natural. The ES linting and the terminal right here, although I don't really use the terminal that often, uh, the ES linting real time and that Git integration is just enough IDE to get the job done. So I think I might be switching to Visual Studio Code here soon. Uh, we'll see, time will tell. I do like Sublime Text, it is fast. But anyway, that's pretty much my dev workflow. I know I th flew through quite a few things, covered the keyboard, covered my utilities that I like to use, covered my text editors that I like to use. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to answer them. Uh, hope this helped you out and have yourself a great day.